chat for Saturday, September 7th, 2024. It is season 18, episode 30. I'm Scott. And I'm RJ. Welcome into the show, everybody. If you'd like to get in touch with us, check out Twitch. Go to Twitch TV. Or, yeah, what is it? Twitch.tv is how you get there. I've just been forever since I've... feel like it's been forever since I've given this out. Twitch.tv, go there, search for our name. Look, go to ingamechat.net, scroll to the bottom, you'll find everything. I don't have to do all this, but you, you can find everything. Uh, we're talking about uh, Twitch. You can find our Discord as well, so you can jump in there and talk with us while we're on Discord. Uh, Twitch, you can use the chat room in there and talk to us. we got people in there right now. RJ, of course, in there. Bama Brian, uh, AC Wraith, Super Game Sniper hanging out there right now. Also, Bama Brian reminding me to do this nice, uh, uh, convenient thing for me later on. It's like past self telling future self, hey, doing you a favor. So, welcome to the show, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We have had uh, a week off here, and we are back to do more video game chatting. Um, so, yeah, you can find us on Twitch and watch the show. Uh, there are probably links in our Discord as well to get to, like, Twitch and all those other places so you can see the show and, you know, interact with us and everything else that you want to do as well. So, it's all there for you. Check it out. Ingamechat.net. Welcome in, RJ. You want to uh, hit up everybody with what you played over the two weeks? Well, for the most part, you, well, usually the same thing over and over again. Played uh, some more baseball with MLB The Show. Trying to get a little further, instead of playing the season, I started going back to my road to the show uh, file to see if I can get to the majors from the minor leagues. Yeah. Right now, my character's in um, AAA, and if I keep my consistency up, it won't be no time before I get into the majors and see how well I can do with, instead of a created or custom character, see what I can do with someone I've built from the ground up. We'll see if I get a little more accomplishment out of that. Yeah. Still, still garbage at batting, but that's something I'm going to work on. Besides, I'm a pitcher anyway, so I ain't got to worry about batting too much. Really, so I ain't got to put too much effort in that. Uh, fed, had, some, had some more time with uh, Virtual Fighter Five uh, Final Showdown. Had some more time with the league that I was playing in for the weekend. Had a good uh, had a good session with that. Learned a few things. Like I said before, you never you never have too much experience to not learn something new. Mm-hmm. Playing, uh, especially playing fighting games, because there's always strategies being changed and and uh, tweaked on every day. So, so you're gonna experience something new um, if you play it long enough. Then I had some time with uh, GTA Online. They got an event going on with bikers, uh, biker missions. We get yeah. we get double double income from your sales. So going to be pushing uh, more illegal drugs all over Los Santos <laughs> and getting more money because that's what I, that's the goal of the game anyway. To do yeah, that, you dealer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you have to. You got to have to. All that's okay. There's the uh, things dealing with uh, folks who try to try to. Uh, uh, break your deal. So to yeah, speak. there was there's, there's a game that I had installed on my PC for the longest time, but I don't have I don't have it on there now, um, and I need to go back to it. Uh, I wanted to, to play it and I never did, uh, and now I'm. Is it Drug Cartel Tycoon or Drug Cart? I don't remember. Probably something simulator. It is. It's something like that. Like you have to, and it starts in like crime simulator, South America or Colombia or something like that. I don't know. It's not. It doesn't take place. In the U.S., although I'm sure the U.S. is involved in some way or another, mm-hmm. but you have to like clear the fields, build your 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 houses where you're processing. I mean, just all this stuff that go, and then your trade routes and everything else. So it's farm simulator, but with drugs. Well, you know, 
I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah. Uh, and so, which is which is where well, I'm headed now. The way you now. describe clearing the fields and building homes and things to I mean, house you have to clear the fields, yeah. but you are you know, it's like does this area have enough of what I need? You know, mm-hmm. if you ever looked at um, see, this is where it gets me because it, it it taps into my city builder aspect. Yeah, where it's like okay, I'm going to build my farm, or I'm going to build my city, or build my trade routes, build my stuff, and you hover over an area. It's like hey, this has this, this, and this. Hey, that's good for. Making drugs, I guess. I don't know what it is, but yeah, you plop it down. Yeah. And uh, well, I mean, you, you do that. Whatever you need to build product, get it. Get a massive together. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, it really, really is as far as like how far it goes with that. Although, you know, we also did a game called, why is that not working? That's not what the game was called. Um, the game was called uh, Plague Inc., right? Yeah. Where you had to create a disease that could wipe out the planet. This well, I was, thought you played as the disease. You you, you are you yeah. are playing as the disease, yeah. but that's but you're creating you know yeah. you okay. are creating the disease that you're going to use to wipe out the planet. Yeah, I need to get on the cargo ship to go to the other right. country, things like that. Yeah. And you can upgrade your disease to be like, all right, I want to be carried by birds. You know, that way I can spread faster or overseas or over bodies of water. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I want to be immune to other things. Like you get, you know, it's all this stuff and and upgrades. Yeah, I basically yeah. Let's go to library and then let's type in drug and see what we get. Nothing. Uh, cartel? Cartel Tycoon. That is the name of it. There mm-hmm. it is. Cartel Tycoon. Game info and links. Let's go to the store page so I can read you a description of this. Cartel Tycoon is survival business sim inspired by the 80s and 90s narco trade. Expand and conquer, fight off rival thugs and evade the authorities, earn people's loyalty and strive to overcome the doomed fate of a power-hungry drug lord. Uh, yeah, who, the Moon Mouse is the developer. What else have they done? Uh, yeah, not a lot. That's a... This, uh, maybe there's some other stuff in here. I can't tell if I'm looking at the publisher page or the de- that's clearly not the developer page because mm. that's just too much stuff. But anyway, yeah, uh, I haven't actually really put any time into it mm. though. But go ahead. Yeah, We're talking about you. I just jumped right in there with my drugs. That's what you're doing in GTA. Yeah, selling drugs. Yeah, <laughs> peddling your wares. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Other than that, um, most recently, I finally spent some time on the first Descendant. Um, on placed on PS4. Yeah. Um nice little um I don't know hero shooter or multi multiplayer shooter that that type of game. Mm-hmm. Uh Destiny ish, I yeah. guess if you want to call it that. Um got the well, a Titan, close to a Titan anyway. I got a character named Ajax who is a defensive specialist who uses uh heavy weapons and has armor and things like that and then more of a defensive nature. So yeah. I started playing with him. Um no, I had a really nice. Had a That's really free good to play, time. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is free, it is. To, play. It is free it's to play. Free to play. Had a really good time with it. Um, you know, it's a basic stand fair. You have a basic story of the last bastion of humanity being take being up um, threatened by this dimensional. Oh, portal. that old chestnut, yeah, right? The yeah. dimensional portal open, so these alien entities come in there uh, threatening humanity. So you got to stop them. Um, you have various missions that you go to, um, different um, mission types. Um, you can play with pe- play with people or go solo if you want. You can go solo if you want to. I tried that and it didn't go very well, yeah. especially on some missions. So it might be in your best interest to try teaming up with folks, even if it's random. Um, because there were some missions there where I'll give you an example. One where I had to gather supplies for this um, uh, a bin or whatever. I had to get these supplies. You have to take out enemies to get the supplies to put them in this bin so they can they can be gathered up over time and uh, sent to where it needs to be. Unfortunately, the problem is if you spend too much time in between taking out enemies, the percentage of completion starts to dwindle. So yeah. you can have like 25% and all of a sudden if you're not paying attention, you'll be at like 13 before you even notice it. You have to keep the uh, keep taking out enemies as quickly as possible. And if your gear's not up to snuff, it's not gonna, you're not going to make it. So um, like I said, you go around the map and uh, explore different parts of the map, uh, unlock different territories, have different type of missions that you go to. And it's basically getting uh, loot like you did in Borderlands. And the, the yeah. loot keeps coming constantly. You're not going to get 
um, a favorite weapon early. It's going to be much later in the game when you max out your levels before you get a weapon you can settle on. What's the monetization like in that game? Uh, you have a buyable currency online to pick up some... Um, to buy what, though? Uh, cosmetic stuff, basically. All cosmetics? Usually cosmetics, uh, from what I saw so far, but I think there's some parts in there, if I'm looking around the store enough, and I really didn't, but I think there's some parts in there you can buy... Um, Equipment to uh, modernize your weapon, something like that, to improve the uh, improve the stats on your weapons, because uh, you can build. Really, so you can buy things to you improve can buy your stats, to improve, improve your stats and weapons and things like that. But you can't get it in game; you just have to grind for it. Oh, so you, wait, so wait now, you can, can buy you, it or grind for it. You can buy it with real world money, yeah, or, or to can, buy or the can, currency that's used in the, whatever yeah, the case may or be, or you can grind for it, yeah. Really? So uh, there's some, uh, like, uh, I need to get That feels kind of pay-to-win-ish a little bit. Like, that's kind of knocking on the door of pay-to-win. Maybe. But, if you can uh, upgrade like said, your stuff with money. If you can, yeah. But it's, like I said, it's optional. I can, I could grind this thing that I upgraded, I grinded for it. I could buy it, but I grinded for it because it wasn't that much of a deal. It's like I needed a material to get, and all I had to do was uh, mm-hmm. keep picking up weapons and sell them off, and I'd get the material I needed to uh, synthesize it in the... Um, on the main uh, in the main headquarters of the game. Yeah. So, like I said, you can you can buy it if you want for convenience. Cause that's what it seems to be going to make it tedious so that it'd be more convenient for you to buy it. I suppose. Yeah. So uh, um, just you can go yeah. that route. Like I said, feels feels kind of pay to winish, but you know what else you played? Mm-hmm. No, that's pretty much it. That was it. Yeah. That's it. All mm-hmm. right. Jumping over into to the games that I've been playing, it has basically been. Uh, uh, I see, I, my problem is I can't remember what I talked about two weeks ago when I was on the show to tell you what I've been playing or what I've been doing. Nothing's really changed that much that I know of. It's basically been Marvel Snap. I swear, though, I thought I tried to play something else. Watched a lot of videos about games. Um, really, though, it's just been... I streamed a lot of Marvel Snap. Um, and I, I may do some more of that tomorrow. I've got some plans for streaming uh, tomorrow. Did you get some bigger, better uh, decks or cards to, to play with? I got some nice variants. Okay. Uh, I, I did not, today I pulled for cards, mm-hmm. but over, I think one weekend I did pull for a, for a card, I believe, and I got it in one, which is the one I wanted. And then last week I didn't pull for any cards. I didn't need or didn't want any of those cards. And this week the spotlight had two cards that I really wanted and it took me three keys to get it. no. It took me four keys to get it. That sucks. How much is each key? Uh, how much you have to go through to get get a key? Uh, you get a key after um, after moving up the collection rank, mm-hmm. which is which is really hard to describe without having something to show you mm-hmm. uh, in in front of you to tell it. But basically, when you upgrade a card and you upgrade a card by earning boosters, you earn boosters through play. You earn boosters through. Uh, completing missions or little things. You earn boosters like just playing, you get boosters. Yeah. Boosters are specific per card. Uh, also, just by playing, you get credits. Credits are what costs to upgrade cards. You can absolutely um, pay money to get credits. Um, you can pay money to get boosters for certain cards because they'll have special packages available where it's like, hey, here's a variant of this person's card. Along with that, you'll get this much gold, which is also in-game currency. You'll also get this many boosters for this specific character. You Sounds know? like similar to what's in uh, First Ascend. There are bundles that come with extra right. stuff that will boost your character up. So when you when you upgrade a card, if you if you upgrade a card one time, it costs like 25 credits and... I don't know, five boosters. Uh, and that gives you one collection rank. If you upgrade it, update it, uh, if you upgrade it again, uh, I think it gives you two or three. And then when you go further, so you go from, uh, I can't remember all the levels, but there's, uh, there's 3D, there's frame break, there's shiny logo, which is stupid. Uh, there's, um, there's infinite. That's the final one. Infinite gives you, I think, ten levels in the collection level, mm-hmm. uh, and you can upgrade well past. In other words, if I've got enough credits and I've got enough boosters for a card that I've never upgraded before, but I've got enough to take it all the way to infinite, 
you get the credit for all those other levels that you've done. So not only will you get the 10 for infinite, you'll get the one for the first one. You get something like 30 when you go from bare bones to infinite on a car. So you get everything in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get all that stuff in between, and it raises your rank like 30-some-odd levels. And every... I don't know exactly what it's set at, but it's like every... 70th level or something like that you get a key mm. yeah so essentially just grind for it you do it you eventually. really just yeah. grind you grind and uh and i did that now i i had seven keys i spent them i got mockingbird which is who i was looking for i got uh red agent i think it was red, u.s agent i think u.s it was. agent yeah it's u.s agent i would look like uh yeah captain america i was gonna say i've got i've got Red Guardian, but this was U.S. Agent. The variant for U.S. Agent looks really good. But anyway, I got U.S. Agent, and I got an extra Red Hulk, which I converted that into some tokens, which is another currency. Three (laughs) types of currency in this game. Uh, And then I finally pulled, because at that point, really they tell you, if you want a card, you make sure you got four keys, because that's a good chance you're going to get the card you want. It's very random. Mm -hmm. So... I had already pulled three, and it was like, I'm pretty sure my next pull is going to be the card, and I did, and I got uh, Silver Sable. Hmm. So, um, And that was this morning that I pulled all that. And yeah, so I don't know. I've just been playing that, been going through. Uh, I'm in an alliance with some other uh, folks from old Colony of Gamers. I got out of the alliance I was in and jumped into the Colony of Gamers alliance, and so mm-hmm. we're going through and just doing stuff like that, and I'm just playing... Uh, snap! I thought I played something else. I feel like I played something else, and I don't know why. My brain is telling me I, I can't figure out what I played. Steam would tell me, right? <laughs> you're Hopefully. not. You're going to tell me, right? Steam. My problem is, is that I feel like I played something else, but actually, I don't think I have. I think I've really given thought about playing something else. I was really considering playing. Um, Star Wars Outlaws. Mm-hmm. Because you can subscribe to Ubisoft Plus. I think it's 17 bucks a month. And if you subscribe for 17 bucks, I could play Star Wars Outlaws for the entire month. You know, just do a one month thing, play it, and be good. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Um, but the more I read about Star Wars Outlaws, or at least the more I was reading into it, I was like, ah, nope. No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I saw some things that made me think, uh, wait and see on that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, view my profile. Will my profile tell me what games I've been playing? Doesn't it normally? Ah, yes. <laughs> there we go. Um, here we go. Here we go. Now we're better. Okay, good. I played Duck Detective, The Secret Salami. Hmm. That was fun. The thing's got a, um, by the way, I 100%ed the, the achievements on that thing. It's sitting at overwhelmingly positive with 2,931 uh, reviews. I mean, it's good. I, it entertains you, right? It really did. Oh, it's yeah. got a soundtrack. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, it's, it's got, it's got some great, fantastic voice work in it. Uh, and, you're going to hear a lot of voices in that. They all the characters talk, and so yeah, it was it was a fun little detective game. And then it gave you a thing after it was over with, as far as like, hey, these uh, this, this many percentage of people picked this person as the culprit and did this and that sort of thing. So it was kind of nice. It was nice. Uh, what else did I do? Um, I picked up a game called Tactical Breach Wizards. That was uh, interesting, and I'm still playing it. I've liked it, or I've, I've enjoyed what I've played with it. Uh, Tactical Breach Wizards. I would like to give you an idea of what it is. It's basically a... Um, remember Stealth Inc.? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like that, just not being stealthy. Um, yeah, you're basically... It's kind of Dungeons & Dragons mixed with Stealth Inc., sort of, where you have to move in that isometric view yeah. type of thing. Very XCOM. Well, I say XCOM. It's not even like that. But still, it's got that isometric view. And your team are... you got a wizard, and you've got a... like um, 
Oh, God. I Wait, can't remember what she was is. Was it Stealth Ink or Invisible Ink? It was Invisible Ink. Okay. You're yeah. right. It was Invisible Ink. Yeah. Not Stealth Ink. I don't know. There's probably a game called Stealth Ink. Um, probably is. Let's see. But yeah, you play as a... You, well, you play as many different people on the team. There is. There is? That's there's what I figured. Stealth Ink, yeah. Yeah. There's like a wizard and, and, and a witch and a couple of other things that are in there as well. Uh, I was trying to see if they had a list. Um... But yeah, anyway, Tactical Breach Wizards, it's out now uh, on Steam, and I, I've enjoyed what I've played with, and I want to put some more time in it. What else did I pick up? Uh, I picked up something called, and I'm going to mispronounce this, is it Beton Brutal? B-E-T-O-N, and then Brutal is the other name. Hmm. It is strictly platforming. It is absolutely platforming. It is first-person platforming. So Mirror's Age? Um, yes, but not, uh, it's, uh, yeah, kind of, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, to, to be honest, yeah. I mean, I can't think of any other title other than uh, that when it, when you say first person platforming, platforming yeah. because parkour from the first person point of view. Like, right. There's no parkour it. in this. Yeah. It is mainly you, you do not take fall damage. There's no health. There's no enemy shooting at you. There's none of that. There is you, and then you just want to go up. That's it. So there's all these different ways to move about the level and continue to go up. Mm -hmm. Um, You're timed on it, so you can do speed runs if you want to do that. Uh, But you can go, I don't know how high you can go, but I know if you look up, when you're at the bottom, uh, when you're starting near the floor and you look up, uh, you get vertigo. Like game induced vertigo. Mm. In other words, the it starts to stretch a little bit, mm. and there's a and and I don't know if that benefits you, makes it easier for you to land on smaller platforms and things like that that they have all over the area for you to continue to climb upwards. Mm. I haven't really understood the, the the concept of the vertigo part of it, mm. but I know when you get higher and you look down, it does the same thing, starts to give you vertigo. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but yeah, so I'm not exactly sure on that one. It was as a cheap pickup, but it was also, um, I think overwhelmingly positive. So I picked it up. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I've been playing, which is taking us to the, uh, the end of the thing here. Mm. But I, uh, cheap and well liked, man, it's a good combination. I mean, basically that's what I was going for. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the times when I look at steam, I'm going for what's the cheapest that's on the discount and how well has it been liked? Yeah. Oh, that's got the dreaded RNG looking mixed review next to it i'm gonna skip that one even though it's like two dollars like nah i'll come back to you you don't meet both of my criteria yeah i know it's not it's one or the other and it's just not doing that in fact oh i closed it i was gonna see what was up for uh what was up for grabs this weekend can i go to my wish list store wish list all right so let me go to my wish list we'll 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 do a check here this is I'm going to sort it by discounts. What do we got today? Um, anything overwhelmingly positive? Let me look here. Besiege is $3.75. That is overwhelmingly positive. It is on sale right now. I, uh, what? See, here's my problem. I got Chance of Sonar, I guess. Mm-hmm. I talked about this. I played it on Game Pass, and I couldn't understand... How to decipher the language? Yeah. It's overwhelmingly positive, even though I had an issue with it. Uh, and it, but it's on sale, and I'm skipping that. Uh, Nine Souls is another platformer that is overwhelmingly positive, but it's on sale for twenty three ninety nine. You can come down further than that. To me, recently uh, released. Hmm? Recently released. Yeah, well, May 29th. Mm, so not okay. too recent. Not, yeah, not too recent. Um. The other part of it is is that even while looking at these discounts, what I really, really want to be playing right now, or what I would like to be playing right now, is either Space Marine 2, mm-hmm. with co-op and everything that they've got going on with that, or Astrobot mm-hmm. on PlayStation 5. Uh, so we're going to get to those here in a bit. I wanted to also, before we go to a break here, because I'll say it now and I'll say it again later in the episode but 
Uh, I mentioned this on our, our Twitter page that uh, we're going to be doing the it says the balls return this Sunday, and that is pinball. Mm. I got a code for two new tables in pinball effects. Okay. Uh, they're, they're, they're reaching back out in touch with me again, so I'm really thankful for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, offered them, and I said, yeah, I would, I would really like those. And so we're going to play Silver Ball Sundays tomorrow. I got two brand new tables from Pinball Effects 3 to, to try out for you. Okay. Uh, one is based on uh, Goat Simulator. Mm-hmm. I, it's not a game I've, I've, I've seen the game played, but it's not a game that I play. Yeah, but, you know, but you're familiar with, with it enough. Oh, I'm you, absolutely yeah. familiar with it. I just don't know how well I'm going to be able to like give you any indication of what's going on while I play it. Mm-hmm. The table. Because um, I'm not going to reference... Uh, outside of Goats... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to tell you uh, what the reference is to, you know, mm-hmm. the different things that are on the table. However, the other table that I'll be playing is based on the Princess Bride. No problem okay. telling you about that one. So I'll look forward to uh, doing those. And I hope that we get more. Mm. I hope that this becomes a long running thing. What I really hope for is they can get my, my entire collection back on this thing. Because yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of tables I'd like to go back to that I've, never, that I've not played. And they've got some great Williams tables in there that I'd like to play as well. So, I don't know. We'll see how that pans out. But, uh, yeah, Silver Ball Sunday's tomorrow. I do not know what time. Sometime after I post the show, I might stream, stream some Snap. But then I'll jump into Silver Ball Sunday's and stream that. Mm-hmm. So that is uh, that is going to happen uh, tomorrow on the show. So there you go. I bet that line is in there, Bama Brian. He says, inconceivable. I absolutely bet that line uh, is in the game. I don't know if they got the original uh, uh, the the original audio from the film. That's that's also a problem with these. They can license the table, but that doesn't actually get them everything else they need. Yeah. So a lot of the times they have to have impersonators. Um. And things like that to use to use the voice work. Yeah. And sometimes they were able to, but not always. Hey, it worked for Back to the Future. Yeah. Ooh, I forgot about Pinball M. I need to reach out to them about that, too. Because I need to also get the tables for Pinball M. I don't know why they... Mature rated pinball tables. I mean, I get it. I know it. But they put Bride of Pinbot out there <laughs> back, in the, back in the 80s. <laughs> that was... Uh, hmm. A little risque. But anyway, we're going to come back. We're going to uh, jump into the news. We're going to jump into, I don't know, just, yeah, whatever you'd like to jump into as well. We'll talk about all of it coming up on In Game Chat. Here is music. We're going to our uh, older games on this one. This comes from OutRun 2006. It is uh, called Coast to Coast. And that may be the name of the game, subtitle for the game, or it may be a I name. Think it is. Yeah, you think it is? Outcoast 2, Coast to Coast, yeah, the more updated version, yeah. Right, okay. Well, that's the name of the game that we're pulling from. I do not know what this track is, but it's from that game, Outrun Coast to Coast. We'll be right back with more of In Game Chat after this. Back in to in game chat. That is music from Final Fantasy 2 on the SNES. Game I never played. Game I saw the box art of many, 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 many times. 
big red box with just title cross of Final Fantasy 2. That's it. Mm-hmm. No character on the front. No nothing. Just title. It's basically either you know it or you don't. Yeah. Red screen or red red background title. Boom. There you go. Um, but yeah, uh, that was Final Fantasy 2. Interesting to note, though, that uh, when we went to break earlier, RJ was like, that is... That title for the Outrun track is called Splash Wave. I was like, really? And he kept playing, and then he went and found it, and yeah, it was called Splash Wave. So, mm-hmm. good job. That was amazing that you picked that out. <laughs> from, what, 2006? A track from 2006, I think? Well, no, the original Outrun. Oh, they just keep using it over they and over again? Re- they just gotcha. remix the same. Uh, they, they remix the same three original tracks, and then they added more as time went by. Now, uh Coast to Coast had a ton of tracks in there, but you got, it's like every Outrun game, you've got to have the three mm-hmm. original songs on the radio that you could pick when uh, when, we, when the game first came out. Yeah, we had the um, 20th or 20, was it 25 or 20? Let's see, this is 2024 to 2014, 14 to 2004. Yeah, 20 years, 20th anniversary of Burnout 3 mm-hmm. Takedown being released. A game that currently is not available to play anywhere unless you have an Xbox 360. Hmm. Not it even is, Steam, not even oh. It's not backwards compatible. It is not on EA Origin or anything like that. If you've got a if you've got a Xbox 360, you can play Burnout 3 Takedown. Mm. If you still got one of those hooked up. However, if you've got um, a PC <laughs> that can emulate, you can also do that as well. And I am seriously considering it. Seriously considering it, not only for the PC. Well, I didn't bring it. I meant to bring it. I forgot. Uh, but my Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like, yeah. I, I, I There was a whole thread about it. People were talking about it and and showing it off. You know, videos from it and everything else. And it just looked really, really good. And I and I say it looked really good. I mean, it was triggering the nostalgia. Yeah, you know, you know, there's a lot of there's some titles. There's a lot of titles out there. Folks have you know there that they want to play because they had such a good time with it. You know, they'd love to see it back in some some form or whatever. Uh, we all hope they would. Yeah. We, I mean, even if they weren't going to continue the franchise, we always hope they would do a revisit of mm-hmm. the other games in the series. Maybe not Paradise, but go back to like Burnout Three, Burnout Revenge. Mm-hmm. Specifically, those two, and those are probably the two that I'm going to throw in there um, when I do the emulation. Emulation, uh, if I get, if I ever get around to doing it. Uh, yeah. But I've looked into what it would take to do it, and I'm more than likely going to make that happen. I would really like those games, if anything. See, now it becomes, you know, when I got my Steam Deck and I put stuff on there, and I was just throwing anything and everything, you know, just everything into the pot. Yeah. Uh, just to have it. Now that I've got the old stuff into the pot, now it's like. Let me go back and get my favorites that I can't play anymore. Put those in the pot. You know, let me... And I sort of get that preservation uh, preservation mindset of video games mm-hmm. where I'm preserving this so that I can play it again and again and I, it's not going to get taken away from me type of yeah. thing. Yeah. I totally get that now mm-hmm. from wanting to have uh, that game. And then I guess I would look into other... You know, that'll just lead into other games that I would like to, you know, start to curate yeah and keep as a my collection yeah i don't care about all the you know i don't know how many games i put on that steam deck from the nes days and that's i don't care i would go through there and maybe pick a couple out of that that i would say those are those are ones i would preserve but right now i kind of i kind of think about stuff like that burnout to uh yeah to save and preserve so anyway that's a thought to do that but yeah it was the 20th anniversary of burnout three i remember i was working here I had taken the day off for its release. This was a big deal because this was... Was it Tuesday? Uh, I believe it was. Yeah, because yeah, there was a time when Tuesday... Yeah, was yeah, Tuesday was the ga- yeah. day the games released. Mm-hmm. The fact that it was going to be an Xbox Live title was a big deal. They were going to take Burnout and take it online. Mm-hmm. It was EA, which uh, before that was Activision. Uh, or... A claim or Activision? I think it was a claim. Probably a claim. Yeah, it was a yeah. claim. It was a claim 
for Burnout 1 and Burnout 2, and I, th- I think, God, it might have been Activision. Uh, anyway, EA bought the franchise, and which is why that seems to tell me it was a claim. But EA bought the franchise, and then they released it on Xbox and, and Xbox Live. And it was a huge deal for it. It was a big, big deal, and uh, I remember taking the day off. However, we were about to do a format flip here at the station that same day. We were doing a lot of different stuff at that particular time in 2004. And I remember the night before I had taken the day off, I stayed here well, well, well past midnight working on stuff mm-hmm. for the new station and everything else. Me and the boss of the of the place were here. Yeah, I remember he went to a local pizza joint way down there and brought some pizza back because it was we were here so late working yeah, on this. Yeah, we're going to be here a while. So. Oh my god, were we here for a while? So anyway, I do remember that. I, I remember that specifically. God, I love that game. Love Burnout. All right, let's jump into the news. Before I go off on another tangent of thought that I like to do, let's start with Concord. <laughs> uh, Bama Brian in the chat room made a nice little comment saying, hey, I just picked up this game called Concord. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, Concord is a game that feels like within the span of us doing our last show and now, it was released, it tanked, and it was canceled all in that time. Two weeks. I feel like it's been longer than that. Mm, but because of the talk about it, or whatever? just because the, or the controversy the, or the the wheels, I say the wheels. The the snowball didn't get big enough for me to notice mm-hmm. until it said, "Oh, it's doing really bad." You know, people. You know, it's 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 draining players left and right. It's not doing anything. Yeah, and then it get pu- and then it got pulled. Yeah, it was a bunch um, of um. um when did Con- let's see when did Concord release? Yeah, from what I got, it was a bunch of people talking about the uh, uh, format of the game, content. Uh, people were upset about this and that. Um, oh crap! You might be game? right. Wait All a second. Types of things. Hold up! Wow. Okay. It released the Friday before the last show we did. Mm-hmm. Within that time, in other words, it released on Friday, August 23rd. We did a show on the 24th, and then we didn't do a show until today. Right. So I was absolutely correct. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. It released and got pulled from stores in two weeks. Yeah. Wow. Man. That was... I, I really, I, I'm only realizing this right now. Uh, but the way that I've got it with the uh, with the news articles is that it was talking about it flopping. Um, yeah, Concord shutting down 14 days after launch. Um, Concord is shutting down its servers on September the 6th and will not be playable after that. Today is September the 7th, by the way. Uh, will not be playable after that as its developers explore other options for the sci-fi shooter released last month on PC and PS5. The game struggled to find an audience, never cracking over a thousand concurrent players on Steam and quickly became a flop that was also derided by many critics and fans. On September 3rd, Firewalk and Sony shared the news about Concord shut down in a blog post. Concord fans, we've been listening closely to your feedback since the launch of the game. We want to thank everyone who has joined the journey aboard the North Star. Your support in the passionate community that has grown around the game has meant the world to us. However, while many qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognize other aspects of our game and our initial launch didn't land the way we intended. Therefore, at this time, we have decided to take the game offline beginning September 6th and explore options including those that will better reach our players. We'll keep you updated and thanks again to all the blah, 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 blah. So... Uh, They also gave refunds. Steam gave store refunds. Epic Game Store gave refunds as well. And Sony gave refunds to everybody who bought it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I think the running theory is uh, make it free to play to recoup some of the money that they've lost on this title overall. To try to try to try to do something to get some of that money back. I don't know. At this point, I think your name has become. I now. I could easily be wrong on this. And and the reason I'm telling you that I could easily be wrong on this is because we've had some real stinkers that have risen from the depths of 
not just obscurity, but really bad PR. Really bad. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is the biggest one. Yeah. And I feel like that is just an outlier. I feel like No Man's Sky. I'm thinking it is. Just got the yeah. lucky break that most games don't get. Yeah. I mean, the biggest crime that they did was not living up to the hype of that was all that, that was generated when it was first uh, talked about. But they turned it around. Now, it took them a while. It, it took did. them a good it little did. while to get, the, uh, to get it, get it uh, back on its feet again. Yeah, I don't know. I, but I don't know. I think, I feel like it might be too far gone at this point. Like, you've earned a reputation now. Um, and I don't know how you fix this. I don't, I don't know what the problems were in the game. I really haven't read up on this. It was only around for two weeks, right? Yeah. It didn't attract players. I don't know why it didn't attract players. I haven't looked at the, at the reason why people weren't playing it or what the, what the common consensus was of like, no, it's a shooter. I don't want to pay money for a shooter. It feels like multiplayer shooters like this, if they're not free to play, then people just don't join in on them. Although Helldivers 2 was the same thing. It just wasn't massive. It was like a three-teamer type thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. And I don't know, again, I don't know a lot about this game. It was around for two weeks. I don't know how many people could play it at the same time. I didn't know if it was constant multiplayer type stuff. I don't know anything about it. Mm. I really, really don't know. I don't know that it can be salvaged. It, it all depends. Even if they release it as free to play, that's not really going to help. Maybe they'll try to suicide squad it. Yeah, there you go. What, just... No, uh, Suicide Squad was originally a game that was supposed to be something else, and they mm. went to the free-to-play mode and then tried to tweak it up here and there and yeah. put it out as something else. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what... That's a, that's a, and let me see if this article goes I'll into say it. Check, nope. on it. check on it about a, about a year or two. Yeah, this article doesn't do go it. into it, but it does make me wonder, like, what is the plan? I'm reading more articles here. Um, the only faster cancellation that comes immediately to mind is a game called The Day Before. Remember that? Nope. Oh, I, we talked about it, though. Remember there was a game that was supposed to be released, and then they about two weeks before it was supposed to hit Steam, they delayed it. Um, then they went radio silent for like a year and said nothing about it. So it was never released. Then they came back and wanted to call it something, but then they got a lawsuit because there's already like an app or, a, or there's already a something that uses that name, and so they couldn't use that name. Okay. Yeah, it was a shooter type thing. Looked very much. Um, but did it ever get released? It did. Yeah, it did. It did. Okay. It did get released. Uh, however, it only lasted four days. Okay. <laughs> before it died, uh, it took an entire development studio with it. By the way. Um, it la- the Concord lasted one le- week longer than the day before. Um, this article from PC Gamer says it also stands in very sharp contrast with the confidence that Sony seemed to have in the game pre-release. Sony actually acquired Firewall Studios in 2023 solely on the perceived strength of Concord. Um, and apparently... There's going to be an episode in that... Um, Amazon series coming up in December mm-hmm. that has a bunch of little uh, little yeah the compilation type yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there was going to be one that was based on Concord in that in that thing there still is going to be one based on Concord because it's all set but yeah that'll be interesting the near complete disinterest in the game and subsequ- subsequent decision to give up on it after less than two weeks is tough to see from the outside looking in and no doubt so much tougher for developers to experience firsthand. Um, they said there's going to be a lot of takes today, but wanted to say this. Launching a game is really hard, and a bunch of incredible talent work to bring this game to us, uh, which is what Daryl Nelson tweeted. He's a former Bungie employee and Blizzard employee. Firewalk didn't deserve this, and I hope that the team can recover and regroup for this. Don't want to retweet any clickbait or attract trolls, so I'll just say my heart goes out to everyone at Firewalk Studios regarding today's news. That was that was from Josh Shear 
and I'm probably mispronouncing his name, and I apologize. He's a writer for um, Naughty Dog, worked on Uncharted and Last of Us. Um, so yeah, just a lot of people say, man, really feel bad for the devs and the studios that are working on this. It's one of those things that just kind of, it fails, and it sucks when a game fails. It hurt, you know, that's jobs, that's livelihoods mm-hmm. that, are, that are failing as well. So, I mean, I hate it, but it's a thing that happens in the gaming industry. Mm. They can't all be winners, obviously. So, I, I, I don't know, again, going back to Concord, I don't know much about it. I really don't know much about it. It never interested me. Never at all. Even at free-to-play. Like, I asked you about First Descendant, and I looked at First Descendant, and I was like, Meh, maybe. Even free-to-play, I didn't do it. Yeah. I, uh, I got Suicide Squad for free, right? From the mm-hmm. Amazon Prime thing. It's still right. in my Epic Game Store. I haven't installed it. You know, I haven't actually put it, you know, put any time into it. So... Ever since you got it, you just... Yeah, yeah. Just, no, just been sitting there. But okay. I'm, my point of that being yeah, is yeah. that really take something to get me interested to, I'm going to download this, and I'm going to play it. Mm-hmm. Um, free to play is is hard to get me to do that. Um, I don't know why that is. Mainly because if I feel like it's free to play, I don't feel like I need to put any time in it at the moment. It's always going to be there. It's free whenever I need to, so I'll get to it when I can. Mm-hmm. Right. So that I guess maybe that's my thought. You know, let me go to a game I actually put money into and play that. You know, let me go to a game I just bought or a game that I bought two weeks ago and let me play that rather than playing a free to play game. I suppose I'm not exactly sure as to why, but it never interests me. Never did. I remember seeing the trailer for that thing. I was actually kind of excited whenever I think Sony opened one of their state of plays with uh, a trailer for the game and I was watching it and the animation and everything else looked really good. I had to understand what I was seeing was not gameplay that I was still being pitched on whatever this is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, whatever this is seems to hold promise. And then it turned into, Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a looter shooter thing. It's a, it's a, whatever Concord is, you know? And that immediately was like, turn off. Mm -hmm. Uh, Great. Uh, I hope some people enjoy you, but I will not be one of them. Just did not seem interesting to me. That's it. So, Anyway, that's what's going on with Concord. So, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, what else do we have? Yeah, people are now rushing to sell Concord for way too much now that it's shutting down. So people are trying to sell the game. Also, there were people trying to get as many achievements as they could and get their level up as much as they could to, before the game ended. Uh, I say people, I don't know how many people it was. It ain't many because <laughs> they had to shut it down. So, yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we have more news for you. Uh, I have no idea what else I've got here, but I do have, I mean, it's been two weeks. So yeah, we got more stuff to talk about and we will get to it all coming up on in game chat, going back to late nineties on this, this might be mid to late nineties. Ico yeah. on the PlayStation two. Was it two or was it one? It was two PlayStation two. Mm. Yeah. This is called Castle in the Mist. We'll be back with more of in-game chat right after this. Back into our number two of in-game chat. Music here from Rocket Knight. Hmm. I think it's Rocket Knight Advance. I don't know. Rocket Knight Adventure. I don't know. Stage six. 
is the, the music where this comes from. I think I remember Rocket Knight Adventures. Um, Maybe that's what that's yeah. from. It says ADV, and I I would have easily spelled it that way. Adventures. So, But I was thinking Advance, but Rocket Knight, that wasn't Nintendo, was it? That was Sega. Or was it both? Mm, I know it was on... Uh, and it was on PlayStation because it was uh, like a PlayStation Plus deal for me. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, ne- never, never mind. I was thinking Advance, like Game Boy Advance. But no, yeah. It probably was. I mean, it was a popular franchise, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Rocket Knight Adventures. That's what it is then. Stage six on that one. Welcome back into uh, in-game chat here going over the news. You know, we were talking about Concord being pulled. Oh, Genesis, yeah. Genesis? Yeah. Was it? I was yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I really got more confidence in my memory. <laughs> I don't trust. I used to have a lot of confidence in my memory, but I don't trust it anymore. Mm-hmm. I really don't. I do not trust my memory anymore. Uh, we were talking about Concord being uh, pulled from shelves after just two weeks. And uh, to jump into other games that are having bad days, uh, Ubisoft stock sank to a 10 year low as Star Wars Outlaws underperformed. It's the first Star Wars. It's the first open world Star Wars game ever, um, but their share price fell twelve point six percent since the release of Outlaws on a, on August twenty seventh. Um, the market results indicate that it is not a hit. Uh, a analyst said that the game had struggled to meet sales expectations, despite. Uh, positive critical reviews. The analyst lowered his sales expectations for the game from seven and a half million to five and a half million through March of next year, noting that Outlaw's budget was at least thirty percent higher than last year's Assassin's Creed Mirage. Look, the Ubisoft Plus is really kind of a cool deal. I like it. Mm-hmm. There, you can play anything on PC if you do Ubisoft Plus. You can do Ubisoft Classic, and that gets you. You know, a a limited amount of games that you can play. Ubisoft Plus gets you everything. Uh, All the Assassin's uh, Assassin's Creed's, all the Far Cry's, all Ubisoft titles. Not only that, it cross plays, cross saves, all that stuff. Uh, So if I buy Ubisoft Plus, if I spend my 17 bucks a month on Ubisoft Plus on PC, I'm also picking it up on Xbox. Mm -hmm. So I can go to my Xbox Series X download the Ubisoft games I want to play on there, and my progression will carry over to both. So, yeah, I know. It's also 20 bucks a month, but you get access to a lot of games. I mean, I'm already... I don't know what I'm paying on Game Pass, but that's a good that's a good example to use for me to not do it. How much am I using Game Pass? Not a whole lot. It's a, it's a, I keep telling myself I need to log in again and see what's new and get, put some playtime into it, but I never do. Um, yeah, Game, they do. Game Pass Ultimate? Yeah, yeah, Game Pass Ultimate. And 20, I, 20 a month. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. And I'm not doing much with that, so I'm not sure what I would do with this. Has it gone the, right, has it gone the route of cable? Like you're paying so you paying triple digit uh, dollars a month, and you only got like two channels out of the seven hundred you got. I mean, that maybe mentality. it's close to that because yeah. you know EA also offers something like that as well, an mm-hmm. EA subscription plan where you can play all the games that they have mm-hmm. forever. What the price is a month? Um. So yeah, one of the benefits. So like your streaming services. Yeah, yeah, one of the benefits of doing it straight from the developer, like EA or like Ubisoft, is that subscribing to that service gets you the uber mega editions of the games, whatever they are. You know what I'm saying? And I know that's like a whatever, but that also gets you the early access part Mm -hmm. of that. So when the game, if the game's set to release on a Friday, you can start playing it on a Monday, Mm -hmm. Um, which is fine. If you're into that, that's totally cool. No big deal. My point, my point being is that there's some benefits to it, but even with benefits, how often am I going to use it? I have Game Pass, and I rarely use it. Mm-hmm. So what's the point of doing this? I don't know. Um, so, yeah. I might do it when Assassin's Creed Shadows hits to play that. I'm actually interested in that. 
But I'm also interested in that new Prince of Persia that they have, the 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 uh, roguelike Prince of Persia mm-hmm. that's out. Um, there's probably a lot more other games that Ubisoft has that I'm kind of interested in. So, yeah. And games that I've never played from them before as well. So it's something to look at down the line, but I'm not definitely not interested for Star Wars Outlaws. So, yeah, apparently it didn't do good, but I, I know a lot of people are playing it and most of them enjoying it. I was telling RJ, I figured, you know, if Matt ever came back, he'd be telling us that, you know, how much he's playing it and how much he's enjoying it. Mm. But we figured he would be, right? He's very, very familiar with the setting, the content. Uh, he's, he's extremely familiar with it. So he's going to get the most enjoyment out of it, I would think. Or be the most critical of it, mm-hmm. perhaps. So fits in his wheelhouse. I'm not sure if he's playing it or not. I figure if he is listening, we'll get something from him here in a minute. I am playing it. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. Matt's a made-up person that we don't ever... <laughs> he's just... He's a guy that, that shows up from time to time and only heard about in myths and legends. So, not only did Ubisoft have a bad time with that one, Rocksteady was hit by layoffs after the Suicide Squad game underperformed. Uh... The company's QA department has seen its size almost cut in half over the past month, from 33 team members to 15, with poor sales of Suicide Squad directly cited as a reason for its restructuring. The job losses extend outside of Q&A, too. One staff member posting publicly on social media over the weekend revealed they had been told that they were being made redundant in the middle of their paternity leave. Eurogamer, uh, which is where I'm reading this from, had contacted Suicide Squad for comment or... uh, Warner Brothers for comment, but never received any. Of course, you're not going to get any on that. But anyway, uh, yeah, so it was not good for them. I wish they had realized this. I could have told them this. I, you know, there's there's a large number of people, a very large number of people that would have, could have said, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't go this direction. Don't do it. But they did it anyway. And again, like I said, it always sucks when games fail like this because it's livelihoods and everything else. The developers are not the people to blame on a lot of this. It's the higher ups who say that, you know, put this in your game. Or if you don't, we'll fire you and put somebody in here who will do that. We'll put that in our game. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It just... <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know what that was coming from. <laughs> yeah. But no, that was the point, is that um, it's somebody else making the game. The developers are just told what to put in the game, and everybody else is telling them, nope, you got to put in this, you got to put in this, we want this. Uh, we want this game to make more money after it's released and people buy it. That's how we're going to keep doing this. But it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. I don't think it'll work for them. So what do we got? Um Nintendo did a Nintendo Direct. Uh, I don't know if it was last, it was week before last that they did. And we got to look at some, uh, a Bellatro update. Mm-hmm. Where are you playing Bellatro? Um, Steam and PS4. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it was released on PS4, but I know on Steam, it got the uh, Friends of Jimbo update. It was a free update. Okay. Where it put in uh, characters from The Witcher, Dave the Diver, uh, Among Us, Vampire Survivors. That was on PS4. Yeah. Oh, the, was the, it? Okay. The last update I did on PS4 did have those things with. Uh, okay, I wasn't Jokers. sure. Yeah. Yeah. There was yeah. a setting on there that said, uh, "Would you want to do with uh, Witcher, Dave the Diver, things right. like that?" Yeah. There was something like that on there. I wasn't sure if it was in that or not because I wasn't sure if it was both mm-hmm. or not. Whatever the case was. By the way, do you see where we're getting Bellatro on our phones? Oh, I did not. It's coming out September the 26th, I think, later this month. Okay. They're doing, uh, it'll be on Android and Apple phones. Mm-hmm. You can you can play Bellatro. So, mm-hmm. what else do they have to say? Oh, we got to look at N- N- Neva or Neva. It's the same people who did Gree. Okay. Which is a beautiful, beautiful game. Neva looks just as beautiful as well. Comes out October 15th. Uh, I believe it's also for more than just Switch. I think PC, Switch, probably for you know all consoles as well. We got a release date on that. Moth Cubit was a bug-centric RPG. 
task you for uncovering the secret of the mysterious insect megacorp that you work for. Spring of 2025. Uh, Coffee Talk Tokyo, which basically, if you know about Coffee Talk and Coffee Talk 2.0 or whatever it is, it takes place, I think, in Seattle, and you just have conversations with people you were serving coffee to as well. Sea of Stars, Throws of the Witchmaker, which is also an RPG. Uh, it's, DL- it's DLC for Sea of Stars, by the way. Power Wash Simulator is getting Shrek Swamp. So it's a nice little tie-in. I don't know if it's just for Nintendo, or if you're also get, or for Switch, or if you're also getting it on PC. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. That's the house washing one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Game called Morsels. It's a top-down roguelike shooting actioner. Um, not sure. Interested in it or not? Date everything. Hmm. It's a dating simulator where you'll be able to romance 100 different characters that personify household objects like cabinets and shelves or concepts like your overwhelming sense of dread. It's personified and you can date it. Okay. Unique. I'll give it that. Each object and concept is rendered to look as sexy as possible. <laughs> And you'll choose if you want to foster love, hate, or friendship with each of them. Find the object of your desires October 24th when Date Everything releases. By the way, I they're exactly right in that description, but it was the names of the characters mm-hmm. that I really, really enjoyed. That was really the hook. The way they looked, like... When the blinds were personified <laughs> into a person, how they personified objects, mm-hmm. keeping it so that you could kind of guess what they are just from the way that they were, you know, outfitted. Yeah. But then they had a name as well that helped that. And I don't have any examples here for you. I guess if I played the trailer, I, I do. Can, huh? I do. You got it in front of you? Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an example. Dude's dressed in red and white. His name is Hoover. Right, he's a vacuum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. A vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What's another one that we had? Uh, a young woman in, dressed in black and gold. Her name is Keys. And she's standing next to the item that she's the personification of. She just, she's just key? Just house keys? Black and gold. Keys. Ivories. Keys. Keys. Oh, black. Well, I thought that was black and white. No, uh, but... Uh, the logo, the logo looks like looks gold on the uh, okay. basically a piano, a piano, keys. yeah, keys. So yeah, that's just, that's what her name is. This keys person has uh, like a lampshade halter top, and her name is or his name I have no idea is Lux, and of course it is a uh, it's a lamp. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, there's so many different ones. Wendelin <laughs> is a window. Window. <laughs> Oh, that's a rather regular name, Timothy. Timothy is the, um, you know, the cat clock where the tail goes and the mm-hmm. eyes go back and forth. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, I thought, oh, I didn't mean to close it. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. Those were some of the games that Nintendo talked about at the, at the indie, and Nintendo Direct and indie showcase that they were doing. So, a lot of good stuff there. I closed out the window, so I'm not going to go back to it. Um, what else? We can do some short stuff here before we got to take a break. Um, there's a Destiny mobile game in the works. Super Game Sniper in the chat room mentioned this way at the beginning of the show. I have not looked into this. Let's see. A Destiny mobile game is reportedly in development over at NetEase under the name Destiny Rising. Could be announced soon. The rumor originally came from somebody on Twitter who said that Destiny Rising hasn't been canceled despite Bungie's recent layoffs. Um, The game will reportedly have hero characters instead of having players create their own characters. However, it seemingly will still retain the same kind of feeling of playing Destiny on console or PC, just on mobile. Hmm. Huh. Bloomberg reported that in 2022, when Sony bought Bungie, the developer went ahead and hired new employees to work on several incubation projects, including mobile versions of Destiny. It's possible... 
Destiny Rising is one of those. However, a Destiny spinoff codenamed Payback was reportedly canceled. Bungie referred to that as the next Destiny instead of Destiny 3. However, all that's changed after the firings and the restructuring and everything else that's going on Mm -hmm. uh, at Bungie as well. So if we get a Bungie or if we get a Destiny mobile game, I might take a look at it, but I don't think it's going to change my feeling on mobile games. Mm. I don't, I don't feel, I don't, it's not that I don't like mobile games, but depending on what you have to do in them, like Bellatro seems perfectly fit to be in a mobile game, right? Okay. It is, you, you, You'd play it. Uh, Card games are almost always um, on mobile mobile devices yeah. all the time. So yeah, I can see that. Then I can see that if that's the case. Yeah, you just you, you play it in landscape mode. Mm-hmm. And you well, know, in Lacho's case, you'd have to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You'd but I mean, it would. I think it would work. I think it would work perfectly. Mm-hmm. Destiny, depending on what they would do, I, I don't know if it's still going to be one of those things where you have the controls on the screen and you're moving your character around with whatever and you're shooting. No, I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. I'm really not doing it. Um, but I don't know what else you would do yeah. out, outside of it being like an idler, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to fit. It'll be interesting to see how they tie that in. And more than likely, they'll tie it into the game itself, which if they do that, I'll probably just pass on it. Anyway. I guess in my case, mobile gaming, I never got into because I do have a, a PC. When I, I mean, I, I know I barely play on PC, but I do have a PC and a console to play mm-hmm. my games on, the type of games that I play. And I've seen some mobile games in action. Um, I'm too far removed from the action or for the, uh, in terms of controlling it. Yeah. I'm not, don't feel like I'm, I, looking at it, it doesn't feel like I'm directly, directly involved in what's, what's really going on, and especially the types of games I play. I mean, I've seen uh, mobile uh, games for Street Fighter on there, and I'm like, I, I, no, I can't, I couldn't do it. No. I, uh, I saw you no. just tap this, tap that, and that's all you got. There's no intricate combos to pull off it's just the same move over yeah. and over again it just wasn't wasn't doing it for me doesn't pull me in doesn't no. do anything like that for me so uh, depending on how they make that work it likely will do the same thing and not pull me in mm-hmm. what's the other uh, I don't do a lot of mobile games like I said Snap is one of those Snap's on PC if I had Snap on PlayStation and Xbox which they're not mm-hmm. uh, or Switch then you know Maybe, but I still like the fact that I can play the game just randomly when I got like five minutes. Here, let me play a round of Snap. Boom, done. Yeah. You know? It's a nice little break. Yeah. In Bellatro's so. case, you can quit any time. It'll be, it'll be well, safe. Well, that's the other thing with Bellatro. That'll be another thing that I actually absolutely do. I'll just play a little bit of it when it's time. You know, just close out, go back. It'll remember. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to have integration with your PC like you know what I mean? Yeah. If it's gonna your phone and then gonna work on your PC or whatever, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna work. Uh, Super Game Sniper says I still play Pokemon Go, but that's it. I did for a little while, but I am not a Pokemon person. Uh, I've never really played the games mm-hmm. outside of Pokemon Go. That's it. That's the only time I ever put into Pokemon. So. I believe there is. Yeah, I mean, there's there's items that you can... Uh, AC Wraith says, I think there are mobile fighting games you can use a controller with. They plug into the USB charger port. Uh, there are devices, and I remember recently looking, thinking about picking one up, and I don't remember for what reason. Oh, because I could stream my Xbox games to my Xbox mobile app on my phone. Mm-hmm. But playing them was going to be really weird to do. And so they have these things that plug into your phone that There's basic some attachments on the side. Yeah, like, that basically give turn yeah, like the, the, the into the a controller. On, like the cons on the uh, on, on the, the Nintendo, switch. On the yeah, switch. exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, and so I was kind of curious about that. I never even went through with it and I never considered it afterwards. But yeah, there are ones that do that. I'm glad I didn't do it because I don't do any gaming on my phone mm-hmm. outside of. You know, word games and little things like that. Not anything that requires yeah. a whole lot of simple things like a Wordle. Yeah, you know, card just game, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, little things like that that don't require you to have a keyboard and mouse or a yeah. controller um, or something. What was that game you were playing? Not Words. 
Was that something that uh? Yeah, 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 could, yeah, could, yeah, yeah. Could play on your phone, but you can also play it on your PC too. Yeah. It is on Steam, mm-hmm. uh, where you can play it on Steam there as well. Uh, yeah, not words is fun. I haven't done my Saturday word today, which I'm not about to open it up and do it now. By the way. Yeah. Even though I just grabbed my phone and I went to look at it, I'm not about to do that now. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have uh, the final segment here of the show for today, uh, for this week. We've got music here because uh, this is the reason that uh, I was bringing up Burnout stuff, was the fact that it was the 20th anniversary of Burnout 3. I was looking for Burnout music. I got two tracks from the game. This one comes from Burnout Dominator. The only reason I use this is because it is a remix of the main music that was used in Burnout 2, which is a game I played over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Burnout 2 is the one that got me into it. Mm -hmm. When Burnout 2 Point of Impact released, I played it or I rented it or I don't know what I did, but I played it and the crash mode just instantly pulled me in and people were coming over and we would try to make the, I was like, look at this crash. And I mean, you got to understand how old this is and it would look like crap compared to what we see now. Mm. But at that time we were just like, Oh man, look at that. All the sparks going on and the explosions and all these things happen. And we we're just like, Oh man, you can just create a massive pile up of cars. Mm-hmm. It was great. And that's the one that got me into it. So I've heard this music a lot uh, over the years. So, yeah, this is from Burnout Dominator. Uh, Enjoy. We'll be back with more of in-game chat right after this. Back in to in-game chat. That is your double dose of burnout there. We went out to Burnout Dominator. We came back to Burnout 3. The track is called Shine. Burnout 3 was the first one to use, uh, well, I say the first one. It was the first one in the series to use what was called EA Tracks at that time, where it was licensed music used in the game. So, yeah. And then they did it for all the others. Burnout Revenge. Burnout Paradise. Although for Paradise, using Paradise City was... I mean, it was a no-brainer to use that. So There's a game that I don't know how long that licensing is going to last <laughs> for Paradise City. Yeah, well, I still got it, so... Yeah, yeah. I can play it. Same here. Yeah. Um, do they still use EA tracks in sports? Lethal Magram says they still have EA tracks in, uh, in their sports games. I haven't played an EA sports game in forever to know if they still use EA tracks. Mm-hmm. I miss, what was it, EA Big? Yeah, Big. Yeah. I miss that. Yeah. Those were good Those were good titles in that lineup. Yeah. Um, That's where I came to love SSX. SSX, yeah. And uh, what was the other one, NBA Fight. Street? NBA Street. Was that also you're you're thinking of Def Jam? Def, Def Jam Vendetta because I could have swore I saw the EA Big thing come on there. Uh, yeah, it was on there. Yeah, EA Big. Don't know why that went away. So, all right, back into the news. Let's see what we've got here. 
the Legacy of Legacy of Soul, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver graphic novel, Kickstart, Kickstarter campaign, got through one million dollars uh, on its milestone, which means we're going to get the graphic novel for Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that we're going to hear about a Legacy of Kane remaster or something. I would really that's another series. There you go. There's another one. In okay. fact, I'll need to I'm going to I'm going to I don't think I See, when I when I did my my Steam Deck, it was like NES, Super NES, Genesis. That's about where I stopped. Mhm. But now I want to go back and I want to get my my I want to get my Legacy of Kane, then Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver 2, mm-hmm. uh Blood Omen 2, mm-hmm. and and Defiance. I want to get all that's, I want to just want to preserve my games. So yeah, yep. I would like to do that. Especially the first Blood Omen. Mm-hmm. That is one I did not play a lot of. It was a top-down type game and I just didn't play a lot of it. Mhm. Um, really wasn't interested. But then when Soul Reaver hit, I got really interested in it. And then Soul Reaver 2, I got very interested in it. And then they released Blood Omen 2, which was a sequel to the very first game. Having not played it, but still familiar with the characters involved because of the Soul Reaver series, I was okay in playing Blood Omen 2. I was able to pick up the game from Soul Reaver on, even though I never played the original Legacy of Cain Blood Omen. So, I look forward to doing that. Hmm. So... I know, PS1 and PS2 had some really great games. Yeah, I know, Legacy of Kane, the first one, did not age well. But it's also one that I just never played. And I figure if I'm playing it on current hardware, not that it's going to make it look better, but just to experience it. That's Mm -hmm. all. There's probably some... I know a lot of people built some mods for um, Burnout 3. To kind of soften up graphics to kind of make things look a little bit better mm-hmm. than what it is. Not so pixelated from yeah. going from where it was to where you're playing now. So maybe they have done something like that with those earlier those earlier titles, of course. I don't know. It's just really interesting to think back on, on games like this and say, I want to play those again, but I have no way of doing that. Yeah. Uh, now I do. So Now some of those games are actually on GOG. I think Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver 2... Defiance, stuff like that. I think that's on good old games, maybe even Steam. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But there are places where you can legitimately buy those games Mm -hmm. and still play them. So, AC Wraith says, I enjoyed the first game, but PS1 load times ruined it for me. So I stopped playing, sold it, and regretted it when uh, the PlayStation 2 came out. What else? I'm looking through more news here. There was a lot, honestly, that that took place over the week or over the two weeks that we were gone, but uh, not much to really get into. You know, Borderlands continue to bomb at the box office. It's actually available digitally now if you want to watch it. Uh, Warner Brothers says that one of their biggest priorities right now is making a sequel to Hogwarts Legacy. Okay, look into... <sighs> That's fine. <laughs> it's okay. I know there's people who enjoy the Harry Potter series and enjoy that world. And honestly, it looked really great when I was looking into it. Mm-hmm. And we'll probably get around to playing it at some point. It's not something that I'm cl- as close attached to as I am with some of their other properties, mm-hmm. like Lego, like Batman, or any of the Warner Brothers, uh, any of the DC characters mm-hmm. and stuff. So... Yeah, I, it, it's just another plea for them to go back to Rocksteady and be like, go go make the games you guys want to make. You know? Yeah, but with that sour taste in their mouth. They're, they're not going to do it. They're going to do what works. Right, because they're, they're going to cite yeah. the fact. That's the problem. They're going to cite the fact that Suicide Squad failed on that they didn't do it right. Not necessarily that they did it completely wrong. But that, no, 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 we still need to make money after the game sells. So we still need to put this stuff in here. We just need to do it differently this time, right? Because Suicide Squad didn't work. Or or they get some weird thought in their head, and this is so, be careful when I'm talking. Uh, This is so like what they would do as well. Maybe it'll work on the Harry Potter people. 
let's do what we did with Suicide Squad. But that didn't work because of, they'll, I don't know what they'll say. Comic books or something. I don't know. Something they'll justify or whatever. The bottom line is. Another like stupid said, move. Yeah. Like you said, they're going to go, they're going to go for the money grab because they want money after the fact, right? Yeah. Let me look at, let me look yeah. at this article. Let's see. Uh, to date, 24 million copies of Hogwarts Legacy have been sold across all consoles and PC. Although a follow-up game hasn't been formally announced, Warner Brothers uh, isn't being ambiguous about its plans. According to one executive with the company, getting a sequel into the or getting a sequel to that title is top of their list. The video game industry, and this is the quote from that executive, the video game industry is just like the film business, a hit-driven business. Obviously, a successor to Hogwarts Legacy is one of the biggest priorities in a couple years down the road. Um, They're probably already working on that, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. If they're looking at it being a couple years down the road, that game's already in development. Yeah. So, didn't offer any details about the potential Legacy sequel, but his remarks seem to indicate that the next game is still years away at the earliest. The original game was developed by Avalanche Studio, or Software, and the story was set roughly a century before the life of Harry Potter. Players were given the freedom to create their own characters, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's we'll see how this how this works out. I don't. I would love it if they left it alone to just say, "Hey, let's do this again," but give them more. You know, give them uh, just refine the mechanics, uh, make it better. All this stuff, but just give them more. That'd be great. But I worry that they're going to get greedy, especially with the fact that Rocksteady or the Suicide Squad did so bad I would say, don't that worry. they got to make up for it. Don't worry about it. Expect it. Yeah. At this point, yeah, just expect it. When the fallout happens, they will not learn their lesson, and they'll try another. How many franchises How many franchises they got to work with? I mean, they've got a ton. Yeah. So. It's Warner Brothers. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and oddly, that they have Warner Brothers and they're not doing anything with the Looney Tunes characters outside of multiverses. Yeah. Like, you have a bunch of characters at your disposal and you are squat. Where's my Lego Looney Tunes? I want to say relevance. Because what projects have they been uh, in lately? That, well, okay. We, we can get into that with 15 minutes left in the show. Sure. Okay. Because they did an entire film with, um, what was it, Acme versus uh, Wile E. Coyote, I believe, was going to be the name of the film, I think. Something like that. It was going to be some kind of courtroom whatever, like Wile E. Coyote sues the Acme company because all their products got him hurt. Mm -hmm. To our enjoyment. Right, right, right. Exactly. But they were going to set that. It was going to be a mix between animation and live action. They were going to do this. They filmed it. It is filmed. It is complete. A lot like what they did with Batgirl. Batgirl, yeah. Filmed it. Completed it. Shelved it for tax purposes. Said, we'll just count it as a write-off, and they shelved it. They didn't even, like, shop it around for distributors. Actually, they did. They did shop it around to distributors. They shopped it around to distributors, but they put the price so high that nobody wanted to buy it. And they said, yeah, we tried to save it. No, you didn't. You just took the you took the tax write off on it or whatever the case may be, and you shelved it. And they did the same thing there. They do have another film, a fully animated film, I believe, being released. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. It's a it's a it's a Daffy Porky um, led thing, mm-hmm. and I can't remember the name of it. Something like the end of the world or something like that. I can't remember what it is, mm-hmm. but that seems to be getting a release. Um, it's probably nothing but like a less than 90 minute little animated feature. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make with the Looney Tunes is uh, I don't I, personally, I don't know. Uh, maybe, you can, maybe you can, you with the chat can correct me on this. I don't see them uh, on much of anything like they used to be. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the occasional movie here and there, they're not getting exposed as oh, much I get as they it. used to. Yeah. And it's kind of it's a generational thing. Some folks don't know who. So these characters are, so... Well, what year was it? And I hate to reference this, but what year was uh, Space Jam 2? It was... It was... Was it 2020? No. 2021? 
And I could be even wrong that it was called Space Jam, too. I think it was called something else. But that's Space Jam, A New Legacy? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. What was the year on that? July of 2021. 21. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a long enough time without a kind of any relevance. Plus, that film did not do well yeah. uh, at and all. Space Jam was 96. Yeah. So, But that other movie did not do well. Mm-hmm. But it's the Looney Tunes, man. They have been around for ages. Mm-hmm. And you've got a lot of video game talent to really do something with them that mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be in cell shaded, uh, a cell shaded aspect. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? There's, there, I think there's a way you could do it. I don't know, and I don't know how. Would you aim it towards kids? Would you aim it towards, um, people that grew up with those characters? Who would be the bigger audience right now, though? I, that's a good question. Do enough, do, how do enough kids? Did you, if you're trying to market the kids, do enough know, enough uh, kids know about who these characters are? And of course, the bigger one would be the folks who grew up with it. So. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I, that I've been watching recently, and and we'll get into that, but is um, it's on Amazon Prime, Batman: Cape Crusader. Mm-hmm. It is Bruce Tim and and all the folks that worked on the Batman animated series from way back when. They have taken that aspect of what that Batman animated series was, but they've moved it into not necessarily a more modern setting. It still has that Art Deco, that 30s sort of feel to it, like the original the series look, did. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely does that. But they realize that the people who loved and enjoyed that are in their 40s now. And so the storylines and the subject matters are more along the lines of people who would enjoy watching something in their 40s with that. Go film noir. Right, which they've done. Yeah. Yeah. They've absolutely done, and it's and it's wonderful. I'm really, really enjoying that. So take that with your Looney Tunes, and I realize that may not be something because Batman's a far cry away from Bugs Bunny. But, um, but I realize you could prob- possibly do something with that. It doesn't have to be adult, you know what I'm saying? But it could look more polished than just a cell shader type thing to make it look like it's animated. There's plenty of ways that you go about it. I just don't know how the gameplay or the story or anything like that might look. Mm -hmm. But then I say this, and I look at a game like Astro Bot that just released. Everything about that shouts, kid's game, right? Mm -hmm. But I am drawn to it immensely. And every review that I read about talks, or, or that I've read or watched or anything else, talks about the sheer amount of joy they have just playing that game. The nostalgia drip that it feeds the player for people who have grown up on platformer games like this. And to see everything, it's apparently, it's just beautiful. It runs at a solid 60 frames per second, Mm -hmm. 4K. Um, But yeah, it's... You can have something that looks like it's aimed towards kids, but that every single person can enjoy. And I think Warner Brothers could do that with their with their Looney Tunes characters easily. Mm-hmm. I really do. I don't know what, but I think they could do that. Uh, Lethal Migraine says, SpongeBob is a kid's cartoon until you watch it and see that it's most definitely not. <laughs> but hasn't that always been the thing? The little, because uh, the, the, an, the animators are grown adults and they'll sneak stuff in there with uh you're not paying if you're not paying attention uh confession never seen a single episode of spongebob maybe a clip here and there i know about a couple of things never seen a single episode Mm -hmm. full episode of spongebob so it's on youtube somewhere oh i'm sure it is that's so yeah a little little confessional there for you so Mm -hmm. yeah um so yeah. Uh, anyway, just going over that. Now we can talk about the Minecraft movie trailer because uh, somebody asked in the chat room about it. Um, I think it was Bama Brian. Has anybody seen the new Minecraft movie trailer? Yeah. <sighs> Borderlands. We'll see. We'll see. And the reason I say that we'll see on this, no, I didn't like what I saw of it. Mm-hmm. But also. I don't think I'm the age that it's aiming at. We talked about, you know, we just talked about this with where are you marketing your stuff? You going to little kids, whatever. Who is it? Who is this movie for? Right. And everything about this seems like it's pushing for the audience of Minecraft, not the audience of gamers. 
Not saying that the people who play Minecraft aren't gamers, but Minecraft right now is... or Are you trying to satisfy the players of Minecraft or are you trying to satisfy the casual person who might be interested in this? The players of Minecraft. The people who are playing Minecraft right now, which is not me, not a lot of us. It is a whole bunch of kids playing Minecraft, though. Mm-hmm. Ton of kids playing Minecraft. Ton of kids wearing Minecraft merch, shirts and bags and all sorts of stuff. And I'm not necessarily saying that it's for kids or whatever, but I feel like this movie is aimed at that audience of the Minecraft players, not at the older audience of Minecraft players. Sure, you might get a little interested in it when you take your kid to see the film because you'll understand what's going on as well but i think it's being marketed at somebody not me Mm -hmm. children there's absolutely nothing wrong with that there's money to be made for marketing to children for for doing the you know movies that are aimed at that age group Mm -hmm. it's kind of like when angry birds came out i never played angry birds Maybe once on a plane. But you knew about it. But I knew about it. Yeah. And it wasn't something, I think I've seen it once in my life. But it made a whole lot of money. They did a sequel. Mm -hmm. Because it was aimed at the right audience. Yeah. So the problem I have sometimes with uh, game-based or uh, game-based movies and things like that, that, like I said, they try to cater to the casual uh, moviegoer and not to the people who would... um, have interest mm-hmm. in it. The, basically, the people who play the uh, who play the game or are familiar with it. Right. So, in order to satisfy the casual um, audience, they'll take some things out or alter things significantly that the fans of the game are going to notice immediately. So, in trying to, instead of so when you try to satisfy everybody, you end up end up satisfying nobody. So mm-hmm. that's why they, that's a typical thing. I've seen the reason why they fail a lot. Yeah. Don't make anywhere near the money they could. Uh, AC Wraith says, are kids still playing Minecraft or are they all off on in Roblox? I, I don't know, man. I don't know what the dominant kid game is now. Um, but it feels like there's still the marketing of Minecraft is very much geared towards kids. Whether it be the merch or the game itself. It all seems to be geared towards kids. Um, so that's where I think this movie will do really well with. Yeah, it looks like another Borderlands. But Borderlands was not aimed at the same market that Minecraft is aimed at. Mm. Borderlands was aimed at the people who are playing Borderlands. Um, and people who have been playing Borderlands and they got a lot of things wrong with it, even though I haven't, again, I haven't watched it. I'm just going by what I've heard. They got a lot of things wrong with it. But, uh, again, I don't even know what the rating on Minecraft is. Probably PG. That's a, you know, that's a good question. Let me just check. Yeah. Check it out. Um, PG. Oof. Not that it'll stop anybody, whatever the rating is. I don't know that it's got a rating yet. Yeah, there's no rating for it yet. Comes out April 4th, though. Yeah, I don't see anything about it being rated for... I'm not sure. <laughs> I am not sure. What do what you... What, what, what? I just looked up the Minecraft movie, and the first thing that popped up in the news thing, it says, sorry, the Minecraft movie isn't meant to be for you. Oh, okay, good, yeah. That's... Okay. That's probably the exact... I think that's exactly right. It's not meant for you. It's meant... To, do you, did you click on that article? Uh, yeah, I clicked on it. Does it say who it's, who, who it's aimed for? Or who it's, uh, who it's meant see. for? Uh, who's it? Just curious. Maybe your question was, who is the film even for? Uh, nine-year-olds, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Children. So, yeah. And I think that's the same thing that we're going to get from... Um, yeah, I think that's what you. I think that's what you'll get out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, was a be honest. L- uh, let's be honest. Kevin Hart is neither a good actor or funny. So putting him in the movie was always going to sing it. I know. I I, I never understood it either. 
a lot of that casting I wasn't really sure of regardless, but... Uh, Except Jamie Lee Curtis. I guess. See, I, you're more familiar with the lore of that thing than I am. Mm-hmm. You're more familiar with the characters than I am, so... Well, I mean, the, the, she's uh, she's into gaming and, um, and whatnot. And has a, it's just good, so yeah, I can see that. But everybody else, I don't, I don't know. By the way, Jack Black is cornering the market on our video game films. Bowser, Claptrap, and now whatever that main character is in Minecraft, he's in there now as well. He's the main character. He's Steve, the character of whatever the kid, you know the. Blue guy, I don't know. I thought Steve was a young... Oh, never mind. Okay, never mind. But I thought Steve was a uh, younger guy. I don't know what not Steve gray, is. Not gray-haired with a beard. I don't Steve know. Maybe, is, maybe a, Steve is the player. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Steve and... Yeah. So... I thought it was just a uh, young guy. I don't know. I don't so know. know. I have no clue. Mm-hmm. I really don't know. <laughs> but he's the guy that plays Steve. Mm. So... Yeah, we'll see. Okay, who knows? We shall see. We are coming up on the end of the show here. I want to remind you that tomorrow I'm doing Silver Ball Sundays, which I haven't done in a while. we got two new tables to look at, Goat Simulator Pinball and Princess Bride Pinball. And uh, we're going to take a look at those tomorrow on Silver Ball Sundays. Don't know what time I'm going to stream those, but uh, we will keep you posted on our Twitter account. Just keep watching that. Going to go for a high score? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what the high scores are on that table. Plus, I'm going to be playing Pinball FX3, which is, or not Pinball FX3, but the new Pinball FX. So uh, I have to get my footing playing that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll stream some Snap, Marvel Snap as well tomorrow. i got to do my snaps, and I'll definitely do that. So want to uh, thank you all for joining us on the show this afternoon after our two-week stint of a break. We really do appreciate that. We're going to be back. Now, you're not going to be here next week, right? No. You're not going to be here next week, so... Uh, just be me. Maybe the mythical Matt will show up. Uh, I'll reach out to him, see what he's what he's got going on, see if he wants to join us as well. So, but yeah, we got all that going on. Don't forget to uh, download our show on iTunes whenever we upload it tomorrow. Of course, this video will go live on YouTube tomorrow as well. Uh, don't forget to join us on Twitch, on Discord, uh, the Steam group that we got set up. We're kind of all over the place for you to join in and just kind of enjoy everything that we're doing and and you know interact with everything that we're doing as well so we really appreciate it we got music here from spider-man 3 uh which was the game based on the film but which film was it i think it was the spider-man 3 film i don't know it's called lizard tension uh you guys have a great week rj have a good vacation there and uh we'll see you in two weeks but i'll see the rest of you guys in uh next saturday have a good one